Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? Mm -hmm. I am doing great. I am feeling better. Maybe I'm going to lick the allergy thing after all. Um, I'm not eating as much sugar, which makes me feel better. So I hope you had an awesome Tuesday today. I did. I got a lot of things done. I just got off of a Zoom meeting training thing that I'm really excited about. Um, I'll tell you all about it later. I think it's going to be a great opportunity um, in a direction that God wants me to go. So I feel good about it. I feel a peace about it. So today I want to talk to you about um, ugh, did it stop? Okay. I want to talk to you about be still and know. Be still and know that God is God. And so this very scripture has ministered to me so many times. So many times. I don't know why I look so white today on my other camera. I don't know. I need a better camera. Anyway, be still and know that I am God. So we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about some more scriptures. And I didn't get a chance to, um, since I was on that Zoom meeting training thing, I didn't get a chance to pull up any additional scriptures. So, but I did find some this morning while I was doing my quiet time. So we, it may be a short message tonight. But just think about that. What does it require for us to be still and know that God is God? What does it require from us? So let's jump into prayer and then we will talk about this. I'll share the song that I shared today um, called Be Still. It's kind of an older song, but I really love the lyrics to this song. So let's just jump into some prayer. I'm going to have some unspoken requests too that I would like to lift up to God. God, we just come to you and we just praise you, God, because you are on your throne and you are in control, God, and we can be still. We can be still and let you fight the battle. We can be still and know that you are God, that all things will work out according to your will and your way. God, we thank you because you are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm, God. God, there is just no God like you. You are the great I am. You are the great Jehovah. You are our everlasting Father. You are mighty and magnificent and powerful, but yet you are kind and compassionate and loving, patient, faithful, trustworthy God we can trust you God I just lift up these unspoken requests God you know what's on my heart you know what's on my mind and I just pray God for your will for things to turn out according to your will and in your way and God I just pray for the we pray for the lost tonight we just lift them up to you we pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to you. To draw them to Jesus so they could be saved, God. We pray for the prodigals to be drawn back to you, God. For them to remember the relationship that they had with you through Jesus. And for them to repent and for them to return to that relationship. God, we pray for all the disasters. I got a little behind today because I had to work. But God, I know there are things going on all over the world, all over our country. God, just please be with these people that are affected. God, we pray for the people that have uh, lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. God, that they would feel your presence in their sorrow. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen, my friends. Okay, so let's see where we want to start. Let's start with Psalm 4610. 
Let's see what the rest of Psalm 46 is about, too. We might want to read all of it. Uh, my cat is making noise in the background. You know what? Let's do read all of Psalms 46. Um, I think it sounds really good. God is our refuge and strength, our very present, present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow the bow, and cutteth the spear in asunder, he burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Ooh, that is so good. That is such good scripture. Wow, that's good. And then 48 is good too, but I have some more scriptures. Um, Proverbs. Let's go back to Genesis. Genesis 28, 15. These were kind of from my uh, Bible study this morning. Genesis 28, 15. Yeah, 28 may be missing. Oh, there we are. This Bible is so old. I've had it since I was eight years old. <laughs> it's falling apart. But you know what? It's still God's Word. It's just the pages are very delicate. Okay, 28.15 says this. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places, whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee, until I have done which I have spoken to thee of. So God is going to be with us. And he's not going to leave us. You know, he will not leave us. He cares for us and we can trust him we can trust God with everything that we have this very verse that I just read this 4610 that verse got me through some very scary moments where I just needed to be still and I just needed to let God speak through me and not me say a lot of things that were not necessary I just needed to be still and listen and so maybe you're at a point like that where you just feel so much turmoil from so much going on in your life personally and in our country and all over the world. I think sometimes we just need to be still and we need to trust that God is still on his throne and he is still in control and that he loves us so deeply. And that he cares for us so deeply and that he will protect us and we need to remember these things okay so from Genesis let's go to Proverbs 3 I like Proverbs as much as I like Psalms and sometimes Proverbs is a little hard to understand though Sometimes I can understand Psalms a little bit easier. 
And let's just dive into Proverbs 3, just like we dived into Psalms 46. Let's just read the whole thing. Um, what I had was 3, 5. But let's just read the whole thing. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. In order to be still, we have to trust. We have to trust that God's got what, whatever, whatever is going on in our lives. God has it. He has it well under control. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Today, I felt very overwhelmed knowing that I had a lot to do and a lot to get done and knowing that at 6 o'clock, I needed to be on that Zoom call. So I asked God, I said, direct my steps today, God, because direct me in the steps that I need to take and how I need to take them and what order. I said, order my steps. So ordering steps to me is like, okay, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. So I asked him to order my steps. And you know what? This is the very last thing I have to do other than feed myself tonight. Um, and feed my child later. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Yes, we need to fear the Lord and depart from evil and not think that we are wise. Because don't ever think that I think I have it all figured out. Because I don't. I am learning just like everybody else. That's why on my thing I say come pray, come learn, and come share because I am learning too. Uh, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Excuse me. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty. And thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof. So wisdom, wisdom is more important than silver and fine gold. And understanding, understanding and wisdom. She is more precious than rubies and all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up. And the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Thou shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and keep thy foot from being taken. 
Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with a man without cause, if he have done if he have done thee no harm. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. For the froward is abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with the righteous. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. So that was so good. Proverbs 3 was so good. It had some good stuff in it about wisdom and understanding and um, about what we should seek. You know, we have to trust God. We have to be still and know that He has all of what is going on under control. I have all these things over here. It's a bit crazy. Okay, I'm going to get up and shut this door because my husband just got home and he's on the phone, so I'll be right back. Anita, I'm recording, son, and I really need to lock it so my son can't come in here, but it's okay. All right. So my husband's home, so he can do TV, and he'll change it probably to something. My son will come in here because he will be protesting. Okay, so this is what I shared today about... Um, being still and knowing. So this was my daily verse today. Be still and know that I am God. In Psalm 46, which we read first. This very verse has carried me through so much. It just really has carried me through a lot of scary moments. It has given me a sense of peace and has helped me to let Him speak through me. I love this song and message by Hillsong Uni United. I love the lyrics and this awesome video that has many of the pictures I have for making lyric videos. Um, I love the additional scriptures between lyrics. This is the message for many of us. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted above the heathen I will be exalted in the earth and so that's Psalm 46 10 this will always be an important verse for me I feel like some people need to be reminded that God is working all things out for his glory he is sovereign over all and still in control we nearly need we merely need to be still and let him work Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. All right. So that is what I shared. If you want to go and listen to this song or it is uh, still Hillsong United with lyrics and beautiful pictures. I just love it. Like I said, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Um, yes. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, what I talked to God about this morning. What, we, what my quiet time consisted of. And it was in the afternoon. It was like just a little afternoon, but I don't know. I got to start getting up before 10 o'clock. It's really hard. Good afternoon, God. Good afternoon, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, child, of new opportunities to share my truths 
and the gospel of Jesus. New opportunities to get things done, child. I said, thank you, God, for another day of mercies and blessings of new opportunities to share your truths with others in the gospel of Jesus. New opportunities to get things done, God. Thank you for all of my blessings. Thank you for the reminder this morning of being still and knowing that you are God. Reminding me that you are always working on things also. Child, so much is taking place this week and this month. Child, many good and bad things. The war rages daily in many areas. Be aware. Also, don't forget the meeting this afternoon. Get the app on your computer today, child, before you leave to do your job. Well, I didn't do that, but I did have time, and because of something that I'm doing in my job, I was able to do it a whole lot easier than what I thought it was going to be. A new assignment is here for you, so don't miss this opportunity, child. It is very important. You can do your share later if need be. So that's why I came on here at 7.30. Because from 6 to after 7, I was doing the Zoom call. Um, get back and get ready for it, child. I have called you to this, too. So this is part of my calling, what I was working on this afternoon is part of my calling. Okay, God, I will do what you ask, and I will remember to be still that you are God. I will speak about this tonight and share my experience with it also. And he said, Child, keep walking with Jesus and know that I am working all things out. Nothing is hidden from me, and I have all things under my control. So... So, all my children need to do is learn, pray, and let me work. Be praising and thankful too. This battle belongs to me, and my son will be victorious over all men. And I said, I see that you are, I see what you are seeing. I see, I see what. You are saying clearly, God, I trust only you. This message about being still has helped me so many times. I pray that it will help others to cope with what they are going through. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Thank you for meeting me today, God. Even later, give my mama and daddy a hug. I look forward to seeing my mama and daddy. Child, I'm always fighting for my children against evil and always will. Child, the reunion is soon, so keep sharing my truths in the gospel of Jesus. Please be obedient, child. Walk in the ways of Jesus always and receive the reward planned for you. So much better than the things of the world, child. Only peace, love, and joy here, child. And I said, Maranatha, Maranatha God, which means come Lord Jesus. In case you don't know what Maranatha means, I had to look it up because all these people that I was listening to kept saying Maranatha. And I go, what is that? What is that? So I looked it up. It means come Lord Jesus. So we want him to come. Especially if he's your savior. You see you know by reading this word that things are not miraculously going to get better. That we are headed in a direction of, um, of things that are not getting better. I wonder if I need to read Matthew 24. It's very long. Maybe we'll read that tomorrow. Okay, well, it is salvation time. We'll see, how do I want to do salvation tonight? I really need to clean this little area off. That would go a long ways. I used the fake million dollar bill last night. Um, I don't know where my steps to peace with God are. I wonder if they've fallen. So I 
my things. Um, note to self, I think I'll organize my desk tomorrow. Organize my notes from what I took tonight. Okay, well, how about, would you like a ticket to heaven? <laughs> You're a ticket to heaven. Okay, that actually shows up pretty good. Admit one. So, uh, each person has to decide. Each person has to make this decision. That's why it is admit one. So your ticket to heaven, may I offer you a ticket to heaven? You don't have to pay for it, and that's a good thing, because you could never afford to buy it, not even with the fake million dollar bill that we talked about last night. We can't buy it. We can't buy salvation. Salvation is not for sale. It's free. It's a free gift. But only because someone has already paid the ultimate price. Only because someone paid the ultimate price for it. God loves you and not only wants you to have a fulfilling life on earth, He also wants you to live with Him in heaven forever. He's the one who offers you a paid in full ticket. No one wants to go to hell where there will be no joy and no pleasures whatsoever. And God doesn't want anyone to go there either. The Bible says that God is not wishing that any should perish. 2 Peter 3.9 Let's read 2 Peter 3.9 Well, I should have left it over there. It might have been easier to find. How oh, again, these. Here we are. Second Peter 3 9 says this The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So but there is a problem with getting that free ticket. We have all done wrong, we have all sinned, haven't we? God's Word says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And that's in 1 John. I might as well just read these tonight. 1 John. I have more time tonight. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Sin pollutes. It makes us unclean, unfit for God's presence in that wonderful, perfect place called heaven. Sin penalizes it separates us from a sinless God, for the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 So who paid for it? Well, there's good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth to be born and to live his life without sin. He suffered once for our sins, the righteous one for the unrighteous, which is all of us, that he might bring us to God. So let's look up 1 Peter 3.18. It says, For Christ also hath once suffered for, our, for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Okay, I'm sorry that we have that noise going on. It is my phone that I'm giving one more shot. I'm charging it on its charger, hoping that it will miraculously um, come to life again. Okay, when God laid on him the iniquity, the sins of us all, Isaiah 53, 6. Isaiah 53, 
says, All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, the answer is simple and profound. Jesus was separated from God because he took your place and mine on the cross. And by dying, he paid in full the wages our sins had earned. Then he rose from the dead, was seen by hundreds of people, and is alive today so you can know him and receive the gift of eternal life. Your ticket to heaven. That's right, the Bible says, to all who did receive him, Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So that is so awesome. You can become a new person, born of God, to start a brand new life that pleases God. And of course, all God's children have a ticket to heaven. So the next question is, do you want it? It is no accident you were given this offer of a ticket to heaven. God has made sure you can receive it. The whole issue is, did Jesus pay for all your sins, or didn't he? God said he did. Trust God. Be still and know that God is God. Trust God that it is so. Whoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life. John 3.36 Just as man says, yes, I will take this woman to be my wife, God wants you to tell him, yes, I will take Jesus to be my Savior. I believe that he is the only way to heaven. The Bible says, whoever has the Son, Jesus, has life. 1 John 5.12 If you believe that God's way to heaven is the only way, you can claim your ticket by telling God in words like these. Now I'm going to leave a space so that you can repeat this if you would like to invite Jesus to be your Savior. Dear God, I have sinned. I know I have offended you in many ways. I am so sorry. I believe that Jesus suffered and died for my sins, paid my debt in full, and rose again. Jesus, I believe in you and thank you for what you've done for me. Please save me from the penalty of my sins and give me a new birth and the power to live for you. Thank you for this offer to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So it says, remember what John 3.36 says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Do you now believe in Jesus as your Savior, your only ticket to heaven? Do you have everlasting life like God said? And so this is a good news track. This is not anything that I wrote. This is not anything that I'm stealing. It's a good crossway.org goodnewstracks.org And we bought these from Amazon from our church. I'm going to buy some more tracks. Um, maybe soon. I say that I think every week. Okay. So, if you did invite Jesus to be your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels in heaven are rejoicing, and your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified forever uh, by God through Jesus, His Son. Sorry, I forgot what I was saying.
And so if you want to learn more, if you want to grow closer, if you want a better relationship with God, then read his word every day. Start in Matthew. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Learn who Jesus is. Learn what Jesus did. Um, See how much Jesus loved people and forgave people and still does today because he did come back to life and he is still alive. Read, pray, and praise. Praise God in all things. Okay. So it is time for me. See, everything is marked in my other Bible. I'm having to use my memory. It's time to give you God's blessing. It's not mine. Number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We all need peace. We all need peace. We all need to be still. We need to quit trying to help God do the things that he wants to do in our lives. We need to trust him and let him do it. We need to give him the wheel and just sit back and enjoy the ride. And that comes with trust. And that comes with faith. And sometimes our faith has to be built. Like during this time when I was relying on the scripture, be still and know God. Know that I am God. My faith was being built. And it's stronger and stronger every day. Every storm that I go through, it just gets stronger and stronger. And because Christianity is not like you get saved and all of a sudden you know everything. It's a journey. It is a journey of trusting and having faith in God and watching Him work in our trials, in our tests, in our lives, and knowing that He is not going to leave us, just like we read in uh, one of those scriptures tonight. He is not going to leave us. He's going to guide us through. He's going to order our steps. I asked Him to order my steps today, and I think I got everything done except for one thing, one thing that I thought of that I wanted to get done today. It's okay. I can do it tomorrow. I hope I remember tomorrow. Okay, well, I'm going to pray. And uh, I'm going to go tend to my son. And I have not eaten dinner yet because I was doing that training during the time that I usually eat. So I'm going to pray and I'm going to go eat. God, we just come to you and we're just so thankful, God. So thankful for all that you are and for all that you do, God. We are thankful that we can be still and we can just let you let you do what you need to do in our lives, that we can trust you, God. And the more that we're on the path with Jesus, the more that we see everything that you've done for us in our past and everything that you will do in our present and everything that you will do in our future. God, we just need to trust you. God, again, we cry out for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We pray for our frontline workers that are working on the front lines in service, our medical staffs, our law enforcement, our firefighters, our first responders, all branches of our military, God. We pray for strength and protection for them. We pray for our schools, God. We pray that our kids will be protected. We pray that they will only be taught truth, God. We pray for all the faculties and the counselors, all of them, God, that they would stand up for what is right. God, our schools are vulnerable. Just please be with our students. God, we just pray for truth to 
to rise in all things, God, that are going on in our country and in the world. We just pray for truth, God. We pray for truth, that people would open their hearts to the truth, God, that they would see truth, that they would hear truth, that they would accept truth, God. We just pray for truth. God, we just pray that you would help us to be in your presence more. You would help us to testify to all the goodness that you've done in our lives and that you would help us to encourage others. God, we just pray for our younger generations, God, that they would be open to truth, that they would be able to discern the truth from lies, God, that you would just be with them. God, that you would be with their parents. God, we just pray that you will help us to walk in the ways of Jesus, to shine the light of Jesus in all that we say and all that we do. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, my friends, I hope you have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow, which is Wednesday. I have youth tomorrow, so I will not be here tomorrow night. I'll be sharing God's truth with the youth and sharing the gospel with the youth. So I will not be here. I will be back here on Thursday with another something that God wants me to share. I have no idea what it is. I never know. I never know until that morning and then he will just like confirm it over and over and over to me until I get it done. So anyway, much love, much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.